All right, today we're going to start section 8.6, Radical Expressions and Rational Exponents. Um, so far this chapter, we've talked about rational functions. Now we're going to radical expressions and rational exponents. Does anybody know what a radical means? What's a radical? What sign indicates a radical? A square root is a radical, yeah. So radical is anything with like a square root or a cube root or fourth root. It's a radical. And then a rational exponent. If you think about a rational number, what's a rational number mean? Remember we talked about like natural, whole, integer, and then rational numbers? What were rational numbers? Anything that was a what? A fraction. Okay, for example, like I can have like the square root of 8, and I can have like 8 to the 1 half power. Okay, this is a radical. This is a rational. So recognize the difference. We're going to be talking about those two things today. Um, as you look here, we're going to use properties of nth roots to simplify radical expressions. All right, for example, I want to simplify the fourth root of 81 x to the eighth power. Now, we're getting away from square roots into some tougher ones here, like a fourth root. Now, what does the square root mean? For example, let's say like the square root of 9. What's the square root of 9? 3. What does its square root mean? What times itself gives that number, right? Like a square root is what times itself twice is 9. So like 3 times 3 is 9. Well, we're looking at here in this problem, we have the fourth root of 81 x to the eighth. So really it's like saying the fourth root of 81 and the fourth root of x to the eighth. I'm just going to break it up so we can talk about each one. Well, the fourth root of 81 what times itself four times is 81? The fourth root of 81. What is it? It is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. Okay. Then I have the fourth root of x to the 8. Now we're talking about variables here. Well, to do the variables, it's just simple. You're going to divide it here. For example, this is an 8. I'm going to take 8 divided by my root. So what's 8 divided by 4? 2. So I get 3x squared. And there's your answer right there. And same answer right there. 3x squared. And again, we got that because that's x to the 8 divided by 4. Um, quotient property, this one gets a little bit tougher right here. The quotient property does get a little bit tougher. That's probably the toughest ones you look at today. I have a problem like this. It's the cube root of x to the 9th over 2 which is really like the cube root of 9 over the cube root of 2. So let's look at the variable here first. I have the cube root of x to the 9th. What's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3, so that gets me x third. So I get x to the third over the cube root of 2. Now, do we like having a radical in the denominator? Remember talking about that back in like chapter 1? Do we like radicals in the denominator? No. For example, remember, like, um, let's say I had, like, 2 over the square root of 3. Remember, you have to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Remember doing those problems back there in Chapter 1? Okay, it's the same idea. But now, recognize, instead of a cube root, what do I have here? Or instead of a square root, I have a cube root. So now I need to multiply it how many times down here? How many times do you see there? Jake? Three times. Why is it three times, Jake? Because it's not a square root, it's a cube root. It's a cube root. So does everybody see here? As you look, it's a cube root. So I need to list it out three times to get rid of a cube root. Square roots, we did how many times? Two. Two. If it was a fourth root, guess how many times I have to list it out? Four times. Okay, nice job. So recognize here, I multiply numerator and denominator so I don't change my fractions. All right, and then I end up with x cubed over the cube root of 4 over 2. I get the 4 come taking this right here, multiply together. Now, that is a tougher problem. Yes, we'll see a couple of those, but it is doable. All right, let's try these six here together. Simplify each expression. Number one, the cube root of x to the 8th times the cube root of x to the 4th. Well, I'm going to multiply them first. 
So what's x to the eighth times x to the fourth? When I multiply, what do I do with exponents? I add. So I get the cube root of x to the twelfth. Okay, so cube root of x to the twelfth. Now I'm going to divide. What's How many times does 3 go into 12? So my answer here is going to be x to the fourth. Nice job. And then I have a problem like number 2. I have the fourth root of x to the eighth. This is a tough one here. I'll let you know now. This is a tough one. The fourth root of x to the eighth over 6. So recognize I broke it down to the fourth root of x to the eighth over the fourth root of 6. Let's do the numerator here first. What's the fourth root of x to the eighth? So I get x to the second over the fourth root of six. Now, this is a fourth root. Does everybody see fourth root here? So how many times do I have to list the fourth root of six out to get it to eliminate? Four times. So I'm going to say times that by the fourth root of six over the fourth root of six. Times that by the fourth root of six over the fourth root of six. And I'll take that times the fourth root of six over the fourth root of six. Does everybody see it listed out four times down here? Yeah. Now, why do I list it out four times? Because it cancels that. Fourth root of six times the fourth root of six times the fourth root of six times the fourth root of six gets me six. So I end up with x squared, fourth root of 216, all over six. I multiply the sixes in the numerator. Nice job, Drew. Yeah. The six in the numerator, six times six times six, that gets me 216 there. Okay? <laughs> number two is a tougher problem. I'll tell you that right now. Your problems like number two are tough. Or a lot tougher than your typical problem. Now let's look at number three. Okay, back to kind of an easier set of problem. The cube root of 125, x to the sixth. Cube root of 125, so what times itself three times is 125? Anybody? Five, yeah. Five. And then I have my variables. Six and three. What's six divided by three? So I get five x squared. Nice job. Four. Okay, on a problem like four, I want to simplify first. Does everybody see the 64 and the two? What's 64 divided by two? 32. So really I have the fifth root of 32 over the fifth root of x to the 10th. What's the fifth root of 32? What times itself five times is 32? Somebody said it. Say it again. What times itself five times is 32? Two. I'm, I'm going to give you guys an idea here. I always start with the lower numbers. Like 32, five times, it's not going to be like 10. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, like, that's a big number. You don't want to start with low numbers if it's a higher exponent. Okay? Now to the denominator. The fifth root of x to the 10th. What's 10 divided by 5? 2. two. So I get 2 over x squared. Okay. 5. Does everybody see I need to multiply in 5? So let's multiply first. What's 2 times 4? 8. What's x times x squared? x to the third. So I get the cube root of 8x to the third. What's the cube root of 8 going to be? So what times itself? 3 times is 8. 2. And then do the exponents. What's 3 divided by 3? So I get 2x or 2x to the first. 6. The fourth root of 625x to the eighth. Now let's do the fourth root of 625 first. Now, let's think about this logically. It's 625. It ends in a 5. So what times itself 4 times is going to be 625? It ends in a 5. That's kind of your idea, your clue. What did you say? 5. If it ends in a 5, what's it have to be? It has to be something that ends in a 5. Okay, if it's ending in a 5, what multiplies itself to end in a 5? A 5. So, yeah, 4 through 625 is 5. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. So now I have 8 and 4. What's 8 divided by 4? Uh, so I get 5x squared, and there's my answer. All right.
right? We'll look, we'll, look, we'll look more of those later. Next here, we're going to talk about rational exponents now. All right? Rational exponents are the same thing as radical exponents, just the difference is how they're written. Okay? For example, the nth root of a number can be expressed using a radical or fractional exponent. For example, the nth root of a is the same thing as a equals 1 over n. All right, or for example here, 121 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 121. What's the square root of 121? Yeah, it's right there. It's 11. 216 to the 1 third power is the same thing as the cube root of 216. And that's 6. 256 to the 1 fourth power is the same thing as the fourth root of 256, which is Okay, this goes back. Let's go back to what we were just doing earlier. I think we had a problem like this. It was like x to the 8th or the 4th root of x to the 8th. Remember I said divide, right? Well, wasn't that just x to the 8 over 4? What's 8 over 4 get me? 2. Guess what? It's the same thing here. What happens is you take your numerator, and that becomes your power, and your denominator becomes your root. Okay, so if you look right here, I'll write it up again. I'd write this down. Right here, copy that down. Your numerator becomes your power, and your denominator becomes your root. Now, why is that important? Because you can do problems like these down here now. 64 to the 2 thirds power. Well, my numerator becomes my power, denominator becomes my root. And I can simplify this. Well, what's the cube root of 64 going to get me? So, what times itself three times is 64? Anybody? What times itself three times is 64? Four. So I get four, and then I do the squared part. Four squared is 16. 64 to the two-thirds power is 16. All right? And if you were to take that on a calculator, you need to make sure you do 64 caret to the parentheses two-thirds power. Make sure you type it in correctly. You need to make sure you put the parentheses in there as well if you need to do that on a calculator. Otherwise, it'll read the 2 power first, and then it'll take it divided by 3, sort of operations. Okay. Um, I can do it the other way. If I had the root, I can go to the rational exponent. Okay. Square root of 5 is really like saying 5 to the 1 half power. The 4th root of 6 to the 3rd is just 6 to the 3 fourth power. The power is my numerator. The root is my denominator. Okay, so let's look at number 7 here. Um, 27 to the 4 thirds power. Write each expression in radical form and simplify. Recognize my numerator goes to my power. Denominator goes to my root. So what's the cube root of 27 here first? Cube root of 27 is... Cube root of 27 is... What times itself 3 times 27? 9 times 9 times... Three, nine, three. 3. There we go. Let's say it's not 9. 9 times 9 is 9 and 27. I get 3. So I get now 3 to the 4th power. What's 3 to the 4th power going to get me? 12. Anybody? 3 to the 4th power? Whatever 27 times 3 is, okay? So what's 27 times 3? Um, what was it? 81. 81 is our answer there. Nice job, Allie. Okay, let's try 8. Now, first off, which one is my root? The denominator or the numerator? Which one is my root? Numerator or denominator? The denominator is my root. So it's like a square root of 49 to the third power. Now, in square roots, do I actually need to put this 2 here? Square roots is always an implied 2. So I don't really need the 2 there. I'll put it there for now. So what's the square root of 49? 7. Then I'm going to take 7 to the third power. Does anybody know what 7 to the third power is? 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times 7 is 343. 9. 16 to the 3 fourths power. Which one's my root, Jake? The numerator or denominator? So that's like saying the fourth root of 16. 
to the third power. Is that right? Okay, so what's the fourth through 16, Jake? It is two. So now take two to the third power. It's two to the third power, Jake. Eight. There's your answer. Nice job. Now let's try 10, 11, and 12. I want to write each expression using rational exponents. So I just want to write them as rational exponents here. Now, my root, is my root my denominator or numerator? My root, numerator or denominator? So let's look over here. Let's look back here. 27, 4 to the thirds. My 3, did that go to the numerator or denominator? Denominator. So let's go back over here now. The 5, is that going to go to the numerator or denominator? Denominator. So I get 4 to the 2 fifths power. And I'm done. We just want to rewrite it here. That's it. Well, let's try 11. 11, there's no power and there's no root. Well, what's the invisible power that would go right here? One, there's always an implied one. And what's the invisible root that'd go here? If it's a square root, what's the invisible root? Two. So that's like saying 19 to the one half power. Last one, least number 12. Uh, Katie, what are you thinking on 12? You had to write that as a rational exponent. What do you think it'd be? My root. Other way around. 6 to the 5 fourths power. Why? Because my root is always in the denominator. My root's always my denominator. There you go. Take a couple seconds to try these three on your own. So let's look at number 13 here. Okay, some of you are struggling on it. So I want to look to simplify first. What's 24 over 3? So I end up with 8 over x to the third, all to the one third power, right? Now what's the same thing as a one third power? If I write that as a radical, that would be the cube root of 8 over x to the third. Okay, so what's the cube root of 8? 2. 2. Over, what's the cube root of x to the third? What's 3 divided by 3? So just 2 over x. There you go. Let's try 14 here. Does everybody see how these are different radicals? I have a cube root and a square, uh, a square root and a cube root. Can I multiply those? No, I need to simplify them first. So let's do the square root of 49. What's the square root of 49 going to get me? Times the cube root of 8x to the 6. What's the cube root of 8? What times itself? 3 times is 8. 2. Two. x to the 6, the cube root of x to the 6. What's 6 divided by 3? So 7 times 2x squared. What's 7 times 2? 14. You get 14x squared. And 15, I have a square root here. Well, I want to simplify first. What's 117 divided by 13? Anybody know 117 divided by 13? It is 9. It is nine. So what's the square root of 9? 3. 3, there's your answer. Okay, I would probably look to change a lot of the stuff to radicals. It makes it a lot easier to think of. Take a couple seconds to try these four on your own. Uh, 16, follow along here. I would do the cube root of 8 squared. What's the cube root of 8? 2. 2, two squared is 4. four. Nice job. 17, I would do the cube root of 5 to the fourth power. Um, and that one does not simplify. You're good there. Just leave notes that. 18. Um, right as a rational exponent. What's the invisible root here? If there's no root, what's the invisible root? 2. So right as a rational exponent, I'm going to say 7 to the 2 over 2. What's 2 divided by 2? What's 7 to the first power? 7. Guess what? I could simplify it another way, too. If I look at it here, what's 7 squared? 49. What's the square root of 49? 7. Hey, guess what? Either way you work it out, you end up with 7. And then 19, if I write that as a rational exponent, how's that as a rational exponent? Jake, O'Connor, what are you thinking? Five, three, four. Five to the three-fourths power. Nice job. That's the rational exponent.
Here's your assignment.